try to do my entire presentation as quickly as possible without uh, driving the interpreters crazy. Um, I, I'll skip the, uh, my introductory section where a lot of what I, what I wanted to say has already been said about overcriminalization, about um, data protection, and so on. Um, I would like to say that uh, this is one of the best uh, dossiers I've worked on in terms of the communication from the Commission, the pace and diligence of work of the, um, of the Parliament, and the positive input of the, uh, the Council. I'd like to just address one point, and this is a point that was raised by uh, Mrs. Holmeyer in some of the previous discussions, namely attacks by or for states against computer systems. Um, the EU's approach on this topic is very important for the legitimacy, coherence, and credibility of our efforts to fight against attacks uh, against computer systems. Unfortunately, we're faced with a major contradiction in EU policies on this topic, and I want to illustrate this to you. When we think of attacks against computer systems, we think of things like Stuxnet, which was an attack against a country by some other countries. However, what's happening at the moment is there is an increasing danger of domain names and IP addresses, which are key uh, elements in the functioning of the Internet uh, and the World Wide Web, being used as tools for extraterritorial enforcement by both the United States and the European Union. The, Europe the United States has, up until very recently, never sought to exploit its theoretical jurisdiction over both the companies and the infrastructure that are at the core of the Internet. This, however, is changing with proposals such as the Protect IP and COICA Acts. The result of these and other measures is that the United States is giving itself and giving private companies, in some cases, the power to render inaccessible computer data which resides outside its jurisdiction. As these systems are outside the USA, these actions are by definition without right in the sense of the draft directive and in the sense of the cybercrime convention which the United States has claimed to ratify. That leaves us with the question of how sustainable the definitions in the directive is if state-sponsored and state-protected attacks on computer systems uh, are both permitted and encouraged by the United States. This is creating legal uncertainty for European citizens and European businesses, and it's creating a permanent risk of being defenselessly subjected to acts which are described as criminal by the draft directive. One example of this uh, comes from last year when um, the domain name moo.com was uh, disabled by the United States authorities. They were trying to disable 10 apparently child abuse websites and accidentally rendered inaccessible 84,000 innocent websites and replaced these websites with a notice accusing the 84,000 users of crimes against children. Now, the European Parliament has already reacted to this threat. Uh, in June of last year, it passed a resolution on Internet governance. It argued that governments should protect the integrity of the global Internet and freedom of communications by avoiding any regional measures, such as the revocation of IP addresses and domain names in third countries. The Council of Europe uh, Committee of Ministers uh, supported this approach three weeks ago where it called uh, for member states to protect and promote the universality, integrity, and openness of the Internet. The rapporteur, uh, Mr. Sosa Wagner, being Spanish, will have seen what this means firsthand. In 2009, a British, Brit, excuse me, a British citizen living and working in Spain was running a travel company specializing in trips to Cuba. And from one day to the next, his entire web presence disappeared. The European company, with no activity in the United States, no targeting of activity at U the U.S., and no ambition of doing business in the U.S., had been put on a blacklist by the U.S. Treasury. And as a result of this blacklisting, the company that registered his domain names for him revoked all of them, leaving him without his websites, without his email, without reservations, and without income. Similarly, more recently, the United States has uh, revoked another Spanish domain name on the 
accusation of copyright viola violations, uh, accusations that the Spanish courts have already said are without merit. Meanwhile, the United States Immigration Customs Enforcement Agency has recently claimed that everything that finishes with .com and .net is U.S. jurisdiction. So, as we can see, the problems anticipated by the European Parliament resolution um, are coming true and the integrity of the global internet is being undermined as worries grow about such extraterritorial land grabs. So, what are the other institutions doing about this? Well, not what you'd think is the answer. Uh, the U European Commission and Council has uh, not uh, protested at these attacks. It has enthusiastically endorsed them. The Commission po reacted positively to a, an American proposal to launch an EU-US project on revo revoking not just domain names, but IP addresses, and IP addresses in third countries, which means that the e US would give itself the right to basically c carpet bomb a, an internet provider in anywhere in the Asia region which is covered by the European um, Domain Name Registry. The proposal was first made by the uh, European Commission's communication on the Stockholm program, uh, but this was rejected by the Swedish presidency. But then it reappeared under the Spanish presidency and was adopted by the EU foreign affairs ministers in the General Affairs Council in 2009. This proposal specifically refers to shutting down ISPs and websites outside Europe. Being outside Europe and being outside European jurisdiction, such powers can only be used unlawfully by reaching into the country where the alleged infringing service is operating. A criminal offence under the definitions of this directive. So we're faced with a situation that the European Union is simultaneously giving itself powers to unlawfully disable information resources outside its jurisdiction and proposing criminal sanctions against the unlawful disabling of information resources. Particularly but not only due to the importance of online content due to cloud computing, it is very important for the European Parliament to re-establish its position on state-sponsored attacks against computer systems via abuses of internet infrastructure. As we have seen, it, it was all too correct when it adopted its resolution on internet governance last year. And if it doesn't reaffirm this principle, the danger is the integrity of the global internet. It will mean that European citizens and businesses will be online without any legal certainty. Risk management for their online resources will be based on guesses about the possible policies of their own service provider, of their own government, of governments in countries where their service provider is active, of the policies of the company that registers the domain name of the company that provides them with services, and so on. There's not much wrong, apart from what was mentioned earlier, with the, uh, with the directive as it currently stands. It's, it's important to protect uh, information infrastructure. What we can't be doing is saying what they're doing is wrong and what we're doing is right when what they're doing and we're doing is exactly the same thing. Thank you. <laughs>